So today guys, we have a 2009 Yukon Denali. This is a auction truck. This is how this thing showed up. Let me show you the inside. You're not gonna believe this. All right, starting with the passenger side door, you know, just our typical ooze and goos. But then you look in here and then you wonder what is actually going on, how something like this happens. I mean, it's like an explosion of feces. I mean, this is, this is crazy. Look in here. How do people drive around in a truck like this? I mean, the seats don't look as bad on camera, but I mean, this is just caked in dirt and grime. And I don't even know what's underneath them yet. This is classy. This is real classy. Back door panel, more of the same. And then you look on the inside and yeah, let's, let's just take a gander. That's worn through pretty bad. How do you even wear through the back like that? That's just nuts. Carpets are a joke. Oh boy. Oh, that's delicious. Look at this. How do you lose the covers and break a seatbelt? I didn't even know that. I've never seen that before in my life detailing for as many years as I've done it. Back in the trunk, more deliciousness. Oh, there's the goos and ooze. There we go. Just gotta beat it up a bit. And for the driver's side, that's an aftermarket part. I mean, at least they put a fresh floor mat over the dirty one. I mean, that's, that's classy. Look at that. That's the original color. That's the new color. Driver's seat, more of the same cleaned up. I mean, seat belts are fun to clean. We'll probably get to those. Let's, let's see what's behind door number one. Oh, that's good. Let's go ahead, start ripping out the interior, start getting this vacuum. Oh, let me show you one more thing. Having about 20 Christmas trees makes everything better. This doesn't matter as long as you have those. And look at what we found behind door number one. Got a cookie for you guys. Broken sunglasses. Whole bunch of sh yeah, combos. Jackie Cheese tokens. All right. Holy crap, guys. Wait till you see this. Door number two. Second seat. Dirty. Very good looking. And then when you get closer, those are maggots. With those seats removed and all that yummy stuff underneath, let's go ahead and get the center console out to find out what's going on underneath there. This one heavy son of a, that thing probably, it's just awkwardly heavy. It's such a pain in the butt to get out. But let me show you the inside of this thing with all of the interior removed. Third row, decent, not too bad in stain. Second row, you know, a little better. But then how does the carpet turn gray when it's supposed to look like that? How? Like this is...
Now here's the other problem. Every single one of you or some of you are gonna ask me why am I not gonna pull the carpets in this thing? And as much as I would say I would love to pull the carpets, pressure wash them, kind of get them clean, doing that whole thing. The problem is pulling them out's not a problem. Outside, it's 21 degrees right now in Ohio. So anything I spray on them is instantly gonna freeze and defeat the whole purpose. So we're gonna have to try to extract them the best we can. And there's no way I have room to pressure wash. I mean, this car is taking up the three car bay with the seats pulled out. There's just no way. Honestly, just throwing them away would be the best choice, but we're gonna clean them up the best we can with the extractor and call it a day. All right, so the trick with these carpets that I'm using is I'm using my typical stuff, the Flex Ice, which is a citrus-based powdered cleaner. But because these carpets are as nasty as they are, I saw a tip from one of you guys that commented, I can't remember your name, but you mentioned in throwing a scoop of this too in my spray, like before I start drill brushing. Spray that on drill brush, let it sit for a little bit and let it kind of work its magic. That seemed to work and this, just look at this. That's crazy. Remember, this was all right there. That whole patch was the same color as that dark gray. That's not too bad. I am really, really impressed. And this side came out pretty good. Obviously, we still have a ton to do, but that one little section came out pretty dang nice.
Okay, so one thing that really interested me about these carpets is one, where is this pink stuff even coming from? But the other thing was, is when I looked online to find a replacement carpet to see how much it would cost if you just wanted to rip this thing out and replace it. And I was surprised that it was about 800 bucks because of the three sections of carpet that are inside this SUV. So from a price point, that seems actually pretty steep. So what I would recommend if I was the owner of this vehicle is to one, extract it like we're doing here, get it completely cleaned, but then pull it out and then use a carpet dye to spray on the fabric, change the color to what it would be like new, the closest to that tan that you're seeing there in the center section. That would be the cheapest alternative option compared to buying that all new carpet, which usually aftermarket carpet, even for that matter, is not perfectly fitted to where an OEM carpet would be from the manufacturer. So that would be a good solution if you want to get your carpet dyed um, over replacing it. Just from a price standpoint, it seems to make more sense. I'm guessing that's just what newer prices are compared to what they used to be back in the day the last time I checked. I think the biggest piece of advice and learning experience for me from this detail in particular was how impactful and how well the OxyClean actually worked with cleaning up these carpets. And the smell was actually probably one of the best parts. Not only just the deep cleaning, but the smell that it left was that clean, odor-free smell um, from those fabric carpets. And these ones were super stinky, so it was a huge difference in the end.
Now for all the interior its and bits and dashboard panels and everything else, I'm using Mint Shine All Purpose Cleaner, Fox Clean Detailing Brushes and Towels, all of those supplies that I use in my videos, I actually carry myself and are my own product line at foxclean.com that you guys definitely need to go check out. I'm always running specials, either they're listed on the banner or if you sign up to the mailing list, you'll get email newsletters of new specials coming out, which I highly recommend you do. So that way you can take advantage of that. You automatically get a 15% discount code just by signing up to the newsletter. So head over to Fox Clean after this video to get your detail and supplies, get signed up to that mailing list. And like I said, you won't be disappointed. Just check out the reviews on there. Everybody loves the drying towels, the all purpose, I mean everything, literally everything. So head over there to foxclean.com after this video. We hurt each other's feelings on and on I don't want to change who you are The things you say is always one step too far But I know that I've played my part I'm hurting you as well I guess that we should say we're sorry Say we're sorry to hold up but i see you giving in you know that we shouldn't keep it up like this we hurt each other's feelings on and on
the craziest thing about this center console piece was I, I flipped it over trying to figure out how it would all just unbolt and remove the cup holder sections and just kind of break it down like some other ones do. But because of how dirty it was, you couldn't actually see the seam lines. You couldn't see the screws for some of them. And um, as I got cleaning more and more, sprayed them down and kind of got all vacuumed up, it kind of all came together how it went together, if that makes sense. So. Um, as I got more and more into cleaning it, it kind of made it easier and easier to break it down, get all those pieces broken apart so you could see where all the dirt was to get it all cleaned up. And um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nasty little bugger. That's all I gotta say. It's, it was, this was tasty. Okay, yes, everybody, everybody that says a steam cleaner would be a very good tool to use in this situation, I completely agree. The only problem was is it took a crap on me. I literally started this video, put the power on, and then as it was heating up, it literally popped the breaker, and I looked at it and tried a different outlet, tried a different outlet again, and it still wouldn't power on, so my steam cleaner has officially crapped out on me, and I am going to be picking up a new one very, very shortly for the following video, so that way I can use steam again. Um, but yeah, for this one I had to go without it, which made other things a little bit trickier, I will say that.
Now for these floor mats, the reason why they turned out so well, and I was, like I said earlier, I was not expecting them to turn out this good, was using my carpet cleaner twice with the drill brush before I even extracted it. Um, it kind of removed the first layer of dirt, removed the second layer of dirt with the extractor by not injecting any more fluid, and the OxyClean definitely broke down pretty much everything in there. Um, like I said, I can't express enough how much of a uh, impact it had and how different um, it was in terms of cleaning capability. Um, I also let it sit for a period of time in between each pass, which helped with letting it kind of dwell, work its magic, and kind of getting that stuff cleaned up. So, um, yeah, game changer. So these seats had previously been painted in the past, and you can see in this video, this shot in particular, as I'm drill brushing it, you're seeing the dirt kind of getting released, but then you're seeing the dirt kind of change into a tan color, um, and it's getting lighter. And this is because it's being cleaned at the same time as well as the paint dye that they put on it being lifted from it and being removed. Um, with just a simple cleaner, and I wasn't hitting these super aggressively. So for this seat in particular, um, and this goes with the other passenger seat as well, it's just a qual it's a bad quality dye that they used on it and some sort of paint to hide those wrinkles and hide any of the scratches that were in them. Um, so for this one, as I'm cleaning it, you'll kind of see the color change to a brighter color. And as it gets wiped, it kind of gets dull again. And this is just because that dye that they put on it um, was kind of being removed with a little bit about a cleaner that I was using. This is, this is something that you'll encounter with the cheaper stuff.
Now this seat in particular, this driver's seat, this would have been a perfect candidate for one of those true leather repair kind of kits. The ones that I used in the Mercedes in the past where it was like that gray color. Um, the issue is, is when these cars come up, if you don't have the colors on stock, you can't really just mix and match and take it off the shelf product to make it work. You have to truly color match it to make sure that the color is perfect and also it blends well. So this seat, because it's not torn, it's just those wrinkles and those wear lines where the seat gets crunched together and worn over time. This would be a perfect candidate for a leather repair type situation. So this is one of those details that I would say as I farther, I went into the detail and the longer it took, the less motivation I had to get it done. And that is just something that happens, especially when you're working hard at something. But actually listening to Dan Penn, I helped a lot. I'm essentially saying just do it. That was a big motivator because it's essentially what you have to do in life is just do it. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next detail.